Hi there, and welcome to my Stellaris Let's Play Advanced Strategy Tips and Tricks. This is episode 20. In this episode, I'm going to look at battleships, Federation laws, late game fleet composition, and the Federation ship designer. I hope you enjoy the episode. All right then, welcome back to the League. The year is 2280. We currently have 15 planets, and I'm just going to quickly go through our planets to have a quick look at them and just have a little talk about them. So we've got our Capital World, which is still specialised mostly in research, with a research assistant in air above it. And then population-wise, I'm still trying to crack down on making sure there are as few clerks as possible, but I, I could build another building here. Um, moving on to our next planet, we have Jap Prime, which is a generator world at the moment. But on top of that, we have lots of alloy megaforges here. So we're producing quite a few alloys. That's most of our alloy production, around uh, around about a third, just over a third, just, just less than half. And then next we have uh, this world here, Jurg Suda, which is our main mineral production world. We have maxed out the mining districts available there and given it the upgraded, uh, or in this case actually just the first level min mineral purification plant, which is giving us 200 minerals per month. That's, that's a good proportion. Again, that's uh, just less than a third, actually, in this case, of our produced minerals. Then the next planet here, this one's currently a mining world, but it's, it's, uh, it's got some other districts as well. And we've got some alloy foundries here, an upgraded one, so we're producing a, a reasonable number of alloys, and just some other buildings as well to uh, the Hollow Theatre to balance out the amenities, which is giving us good positive amenities, keeping our happiness up so if i just take a look at one of the population here so our happiness is on 74 percent it's getting plus nine percent from those high amenities plus 10 from the faction approval and plus five from the uh stratified economy so in the citizen rights which is giving us a big boost of stability here we're getting a plus 12 to stability which is around a plus seven percent to our resource output from jobs that uh, our approval rating is giving us. Then the next planet here, we've got uh, lots of administration offices. Now, those administration offices, they are producing, not only are they producing uh, administration, they're also producing unity and stability. And that's pushed up our stability here from the, uh, from, from, uh, well, it's pushed it up by plus six in total, which is, is quite useful. We've got a little bit of overcrowding. We're building a city district to get rid of that. Then we have our first and only habitat. This one is a research habitat, which is giving us plus 10% researchers output. Uh, it's also got research assistance going on, which is great. It's got three research districts and a leisure district. Now the leisure district, I could have built another research district and then instead built a hollow theater. That would have been fine. I just personally prefer to do it this way. You get slightly more unity, and uh, I just I just find it easier to look at and and to build. It's not necessarily a min max, but but it's, it's a personal preference. Uh, next, we've got Ladna. Ladna is, I believe, yep, that was the previous homeworld of uh, of the species we uh, we've made into a tributary. We've got the prosperous unification still. There's a mix uh, here of buildings. It's currently a tech world. And at the moment, I mean, that's that's kind of fine. We don't have an issue with our uh, consumer goods actually though. So I'm just gonna change this one over into an energy generator world because that will give us a big bonus to our generators. And we'll, we're only going to change by a small amount the consumer goods usage. We've got such a large surplus at the moment, that's not really an issue. The next world is another world we captured. That is at the moment a generator world, but I've just left that on automatic. We've got a hollow theater and a couple of alloy foundries. The next building I'm going to build here will be the, the robot building. And following that, we've got uh, Padutaran Prime, which is a tomb world. We have crystal mine, a robot assembly plant. We've got plenty of amenities, uh, which is partly down to the, the, uh, the robot we've got in there. We've got two two robots which have a lower amenities usage because overall uh, our 11 pops are only using 11 amenities which is good um, 
I'm going to build up more mining districts on this one, probably get more mineral output. Then next here we've got a, another mining world. Uh, this one I'm building a hollow theatre on because we're going to lose this luxuries distributed eventually and I want to make sure we have positive amenities to give us positive happiness to increase our stability. And then following that we've got a couple of new worlds, Silent Colony, Decayed Hub. They're going to be turned into generator worlds and mining worlds, uh, but obviously I'll put some buildings in there too. Uh, ruinous Core here. And then we've got uh, another world that we've taken from... Uh, uh, sorry, no, this isn't a world we've taken. This is a world we've had since the beginning. Uh, this has some administration on it, some science research complexes. It is a tech world, but actually it's not necessarily have to be a tech world. What I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one to an administration world, bureaucratic center. That's going to give us an extra 10 bureaucracy, so we've reduced our tech cost by 5%. And the only bonus we're getting from Tech World is a reduction in researcher upkeep, which is consumer goods. We've got plenty of those, it's not needed. Uh, then here we have an industrial world, apparently. That is something I want to change over because we don't need this to be an industrial world. We we're only producing, uh, we've only got a few uh, of those. So actually, I'm going to switch this over to being a generator world just for now because that is, I have the most generator districts. I'm gonna get a nice bonus to my technicians there. So that's all of our planets. Uh, in terms of economy, we're doing fine. Uh, these are the trades I'm currently doing. So uh, I'm selling uh, quite a bit of food. I'm selling some of my minerals. I don't, you know, I, I don't need a massive income. Around 150 to 200 is plenty. But I, I also don't, I don't need a massive energy income either. So, so I'm selling some of those. I am buying some alloys. Uh, I'm selling some Zro because I'm producing some Zro from the Zroni precursor chain and Zron. Uh, I actually need the Zro distillation to fully utilize all of the Zro deposits. But uh, that's the Zro is actually really quite helpful. I'm selling those for 15 a piece. So that's massively helping with my economy. And then I'm also selling some consumer goods as well. I could sell more. I don't need to at this point. I'm happy to build up a bit of a surplus. And then in terms of our fleets, we've got our main fleet here, which has got some some cru cruisers in it with our carriers. There we are, proton launchers and strike craft and then an improved rail gun. Uh, and then looking at our destroyers, those also have proton launchers on as well. So we're getting a, a reasonable damage output uh, for our destroyers and our cruisers. And then our corvettes, uh, they're okay. We've got fusion missiles, which aren't great. And we could really do with swapping those over to torpedoes, but uh, I don't believe we have torpedoes. Let me just check. Oh, actually we do have torpedoes. So yep, I'm gonna swap those over to torpedoes straight away, because as you can see, torpedoes have a higher average damage, but not only that, what they do have, which is good, is they have a higher initial damage output. So they have a, a long cooldown, but a large damage output. So uh, an initial volley of torpedoes will come in, as I've mentioned before, knock out uh, a ship, and then uh, if you were fighting a ship, uh, a fleet with regular missiles, and you had the torpedoes, you'd you'd win the engagement because you'd knock out a number of their ships. They would respond with less firepower over time. Your second volley would come in, knock out a load more, uh, and you know. So in the late game, there's really three builds. It's kind of a, a tic-tac-toe with, uh, or not tic-tac-toe, even it's a rock-paper-scissors. You've got your artillery battleships. Now your artillery battleships have, uh, they'll be uh, all uh, proton launchers or neutron launchers actually uh, across the board with an, a spinal mount, uh, probably going with the energy weapon, but it depends different different players and different play styles and depends on what you're facing. But that, that'll be a main a mainstay uh, of a fleet and that will be countered quite well by a spam of these corvettes with torpedoes. On the other hand, the, what beats torpedoes uh, will be uh, carriers, and that will be heavy carriers, not like these uh, cruiser carriers, but uh, battleship carriers. And a battleship carrier uh, fleet will beat a corvette fleet because the fighters are able to intercept the torpedoes and missiles and take them out. So your a carrier fleet will take out a corvette sp uh, spam, and then an artillery battleship fleet will take out a carrier fleet. When I play in single player, I like to, in the end game, have a group of battleships together. Um, they will have somewhere in the region of a two to one mix of artillery battleships and carrier battleships. I tend to find that works quite well against the, the builds that the AI put out there. 
but in multiplayer obviously you have to you have to work out what your opponent's coming with and uh, attempt to counter that so i'm going to get going now and uh, let's enjoy and now we have got battleships has come up so as soon as you see this technology pretty much you should always take it um battleships are an essential part of that well, they're the best ship pretty much in the game they are one of the two components of of late game fleet of, of possible late game fleets um the, the other component being corvettes so so yeah i mean every other option here is some of them are fine neutronian armor is, is good to get the upgraded armor extra output from metallurgists that's fine as well and even extra research speed that's pretty good but the battleship it's definitely going to be the best hands down so i'm going to take that one so we passed the charter of workers rights unfortunately the ai has decided to uh, flex their muscles and try and enable the council veto power that's something we could be fine with uh, it might end up being a bit of an issue in terms of being able to get our agendas out we're going to push out the change council size two now with our weight and the weight of just one other nation yep that's going to well it's actually two other nations are supporting it so that's going to possibly push on through and uh and, and be a useful uh, piece of legislation. And now we've also unlocked the Federation. So, well, I'm just going to get rid of some of these, get rid of that, fantastic, the treaty, check out our research. At this point, I'm going to go with the planetary shield generator. That's quite important to being able to build fortress habitats. Uh, fantastic, that's done. And so we're going to form a Federation here. Now, in order to do that, we need to get some favors because at the moment they are not willing to accept, but they're only at minus 15. So favors are always a fantastic and important thing to get from the AI as well. It's going to help you in the Galactic Senate. So let's give them some food. The AI absolutely loves food. Fantastic. We'll just unpause that. So they say yes. Brilliant. And now we're going to form a federation. So. The research cooperative we don't want as that's not going to give us a bonus damage to, to the crisis. On the other hand, the hegemony that is going to give us a plus 25% bonus at the max level, but we're only going to get minor other bonuses as the president. Most of the modifiers are locked out for us and only available to the other members in the federation. And the plus 5% resources to jobs, etc., and uh, and also the uh, the damage to crisis ships. Uh, but we want the Galactic Union because in this case we're going to get plus 25% damage to crisis to ships. We'll get that twice. We'll also get a 10% bonus to our diplomatic weight, 10% bonus to unity, an increased influence gain, an additional envoy, and, uh, and also some extra bonuses to naval contribution, uh, reduction of cohesion, all of these things it, it's the vanilla one i'd much prefer getting a martial alliance really or, or actually well the best one really is probably a trade league given the trade policy you can get but as we're not a megacorp and we don't have the the merchant guild civic we'll have to go with galactic union and we'll throw our all of our favors in here we'll just take a random name see what see what which one it gives us And brilliant. When we form the Federation, the first thing we're going to have to do when we form the Federation is put in an envoy. And the reason we need to do that is because we need to bring our cohesion up. Until our cohesion is at plus 100, we are not going to have... Uh, when, until our cohesion is at plus 100, we're not going to be leveling up this Federation. Something else to notice as well is that our tributary is a member of this Federation. That's fine at the moment, but if we look at our members tab, we can see that the Glesbig Foundation is spiritualist, and the spiritualist is conflicting with our materialist ethic, which is not helpful. That is partly why we're getting a reduction from our ethics. So what we can do to combat that is we can vote to mean that subjects cannot join. And that's something we're going to do. We're not going to do that immediately. And actually before that, I'm going to assign an additional envoy just to get this cohesion up uh, up and over as fast as possible. Because once we get to 10, we'll start gaining XP to our federation plus 10 a month. And, 
and and from there we'll start unlocking the different levels and we need to get up to level four here so we can get this uh, da damage to end game crisis factions plus 25 percent if we can get to level five we'll get that again for an extra plus 25 percent in addition to unlocking the perk Defender of the Galaxy, which would give us plus 50%, so we could end up with plus 100% damage to the Crisis, which is great. We need to survive that Crisis. We want to do that. So what we're going to do, in essence, is... Democracy is great. I love democracy. I love everything about democracy. So one of the first things we're going to try and do, not, not immediately, but soon, is when we get closer to uh, 2300, we're going to increase the secession term limit to 40 years that should give us enough time to get up to level three for uh, uh for, for this at which point we can change to challenge well actually we can change the challenge just at level one um, but once we change the challenge we can pick the type of challenge and we can go with an economic challenge uh, that one, the, it's, I believe it's called Golden Ticket or something along that lines, those lines. That should, as long as we do make tour to save some energy or, or have some resources saved up that we can trade for energy, should allow us to maintain the presidency in perpetuity. And then once we get up to level three as well, we can change over the diplomatic voting weight to be by diplomatic weight and change all of the voting types to be majority votes. That will, in essence, enable us to have a very democratic federation, absolutely democratic. But as you can, as you, you'll probably be able to see if I go to the galactic community, our voting power will vastly outweigh the voting power of the other members of our federation. If we look here, 1,318, ours is 3,000, our vassal or tributary is 491. <laughs> that, that's going to give us basically free reign to decide when we go to war, decide when we invite members, uh, decide when to kick members, all of those sorts of things. And we're also going to change it along later on. So either we might change it to subjects cannot join, although we could try and absorb these other two nations if they can survive. They are being really quite nastily smashed up by by the 001. I mean, the, the war exhaustion is, is ticking up there, so I think this war is going to end in another few years, but but it's definitely going somewhere. So yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of the, the trajectory that we want to have this uh, this thing going in. Uh, we're going to be getting plus 10 every, every month. That's going to mean over the course of a single year, we'll get plus 120. So over 10 years, once we get to our maximum cohesion, it'll take us 10 years to upgrade the Federation to level two. And then at level two, we can change to low centralization, uh, hopefully. I mean, the, uh, there's quite high opposition to it at the moment, but, but that's partly due to the fact that cohesion is low. As cohesion goes up, your, the other members of the Federation will be more and more happy with changing the laws. So that's, that's nothing we need to worry about right now. And we've just found a nuclear bomb on, on, on a planet, the, the previous planet, I believe, that, that had the issues with, the, with a, a little tomb opening up and spawning force we, we've got quite a quite a lot uh, not a large but we've got something of a military detachment here we were prepared and now they found a 35 megaton bomb i mean that's that's only 15 megatons shy of the czar bomb so that that's pretty massive yeah okay so we need to do the special project what do we need to do that special project we just need to research it we'll research it we absolutely don't want a nuclear bomb going off on one of our planets that that's not something we'd like and now here on jap prime which is our main alloy production planet we have 17 metallurgist jobs but the next thing i'm going to build there is a ministry of production that's going to give us a big plus 15 percent output to our to our metallurgist which is it's a pretty nice buff so i'm just going to throw that one in there before upgrading any of the other facilities and i've also built some some volatile moats building and chemical plants is going up there, so I, I shouldn't have any issues here. Well, we've managed to disarm the bomb. Crisis averted. Everything's okay. So we're going to enable the council veto power, and then immediately after that, we're hoping to change the size to two. I mean, a lot of the community, our vassal, ourselves, and the person in second place all believe that it's a great idea. 
The AI might veto it. If they do, we're going to try and push through another greater goods, uh, another greater good law. So probably the the five year plan. Actually, we have to wait after passing that one. So, so perhaps we'll go with the upgrade to Unchained Knowledge, the Astral Studies Network. It's fine if they have the veto because although they can use it, they will no longer be able to use it after having used it once. So you can then put some other piece of legislation in that's, that's just as important to you. And we're almost done with the battleship as well. Let's go for, let's see, what would we prefer? I think better sensors at this point. Or actually, the, the increased research generation. Right, we've got the battleship, which is fantastic. Now, the next thing we're actually going to take is we're going to take the improved strike craft. Right, and this whole planet of Rochor has just became pacifist. That's quite interesting, I suppose. So just going over to our battleship designs, of course, we're not going to keep the, the one that generates. For now, we're simply going to build an artillery battleship. We're going to equip it with neutron launchers across the board and the artillery combat computer. And we're going to throw in some crystal infused plating. That's going to really pump up our health. Yep, so we're going to have quite high health. We do still have some shields and armor. But as you can see, the, the, we're going to be getting just as much health as we do armor. Losing health can be a negative. So as you lose health, the ability for your ship to deal damage is reduced. So crystal hull plating, if you just go with that, that means that as soon as you start taking damage, your, your damage output will go down. On the flip side of that, though, most weapons deal significantly reduced damage to hull as opposed to something else. I mean, neutron launchers are the only example which kind of, they deal the most damage to hull than anything else. And in the late game, people want to have lots of, people are going to have lots of neutron launchers around. They're going to have them on star bases. They're going to have them everywhere. So, so you know, that's what you're going to be needing to look out for. In order to counter that, you'll, you'll want to have lots of shields, basically. If you're coming up against a neutron launcher heavy fleet, you want lots of shields. But again, uh, against against something with neutron launchers, you're going to be probably facing a corvette spam. Well, the corvette spam is going to have the torpedoes on it, and those torpedoes are going to go straight through your shield and uh, and do additional damage to your hull. So, so it is definitely very much a, a rock paper scissors kind of game. Uh, I haven't yet researched the spinal mount. I can only start researching spinal mount technologies once I have the battleship uh, research. So, so that's done let's start building some of those and that's going to massively increase our military capability and military output i'm also at this point going to go with the centralized command we can get the dread encampment then because why not let's go to fleet manager i'm going to create a new fleet i'm going to set the home base to be the capital yep and then i'm going to throw in some battleships let's go with four that won't put us over our naval cap we'll build those four battleships that's going to give us another at least four and a half thousand, which, uh, which is quite a lot of extra military power. Uh, and actually something we are going to do is we're going to bring our main fleet over here to Gre Greki, because we're going to take down this, uh, we're going to have a look at this shielded world over there. There's a, there's a good event chain we can go through there, which will be quite interesting. And there we can see that a piece has come from 001, and that's because they have, they they one of them reached complete war exhaustion. I think the attacker in this case, they managed to force a piece Something that's also important to look at will be the Federation ship designers. So we've built our own battleships, but now we need to make sure that we build battleships which will be good for the Federation to build. So we're going to go with exactly the same design pretty much for the one that we went with. I'm slightly more in the way of shields because they've got slightly better reactors than we have. But otherwise, this is going to be fine. Line combatant computer, don't go with that one. It's basically the worst one. You want to go with either the artillery or the carrier on these ships. Partly because they're going to sit at a further range, which is good uh, for both, but also the, the bonuses are just, are just much better. The chance to hit bonus plus 10 is not going to be as important as that extra weapons range. Because in the late game, you're going to be sniping at each other from the other ends of the battlefield. You need that weapon range. So I'm gonna save this battleship, delete the others, and then I'm just gonna go through and sort out all of the other ships.
So here we are, we've got a carrier cruiser, an artillery destroyer, and a torpedo corvette, along with our artillery battleship. And we've just set those up because even though at the moment in our Federation we have no uh, fleet power, we, uh, we have to set that up so that once, uh, once ships can be made, because the AI will start building ships as soon as they can be made, you, you need to have the right, the right ships ready. And that's going to come along when we get to here. If we had a, a military federation, the, uh, the military alliance, the martial alliance, we'd start with this low uh, federation fleet contribution already. But we don't have that, so we can't. Right, let's try out a dread encampment here on this planet. Because we've got science output, it's going to increase our science output, as well as giving us a load more naval cap and some defense armies. This world here is there on the edge of our space so actually it's quite quite useful to be able to defend it we've engaged this fleet they're going to fall really quickly there we go i don't even think we've lost anything no they did 43 damage to one of our ships oh well so let's survey this system as soon as we can and we'll explore where the natural wormhole goes after that and then i'm going to take the standardized uh, build patterns for the battleships because that's actually going to be really quite helpful quite soon, uh, increasing the speed at which we can pump those things out. Now usually here I'd go with the sapient combat computers because that's a really good bonus, but actually I need the antimatter reactors uh, at this point because the neutron launchers are very energy intensive, so I need better reactors on my ships. Otherwise though, I'm probably just here going to go with the increased naval capacity. So something that's going to be great about these, these habitats I built when I turn them into fortress worlds they're going to really start boosting up my my naval capacity because uh, soldier jobs produce extra naval cap. I've also put down put a stronghold down on this one, so I'm going to upgrade that too. And as you can see, this is giving me plus four naval cap. So for every fortress I have, that's an extra plus twelve naval cap. That's one and a half battleships. So I've got I'm going to have three fortress habitats, and I'll probably turn this into a bit of a fortress world as well and possibly one of the worlds along here. And from those, I should be getting somewhere in the region of, uh, well, it's plus 12 for fortress. So we've got four fortresses. We're looking at around plus 48. So that's another 200. So that's a whole fleet worth of extra naval cap I'm going to be getting from just those four planets. And that's where I'm going to leave this episode. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you have any feedback, please leave a comment. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.